Caprice number 24, the theme which has inspired great composers, one of the most famous themes uh, in the history of music, I suppose. There is something mesmerizing about that. So I uh, suggest we shouldn't play it too much like a march. So separate well the 16 note because there is a 16 uh, cap before that. And don't play too much of a sound because it says uh, piano second time, but doesn't say forte first time. So just make it sort of mezzo forte sound. When you start second section, make it a little bit longer. Then go with the bow for the four notes. Don't make a crescendo, but don't make diminuendo either. Next variation, practice it well with the separate bones. difficult passage here. First, of course, you practice just intonation. With your hand going a little bit back and then coming forth again. Caprice number five. That's one of the most famous ones and uh, being played quite often. I think it makes sense to play it with the original bow stroke in the agitato part. You have to know very, very well how many notes and how many fingers you have to play before every shift. So it's always very light in the beginning and then you go. Don't underestimate the uh, beginning, uh, also the ending, but especially the beginning in minor. It's quite tricky for the intonation. It would make a little crescendo in the end on the, on the chromatic scale. Articulate well with the left hand, place it very well, practicing the separate bowings, and then just play it light, small bow near the frog, and then go. Uh, and then Without forcing your hand, play with a little stop or playing longer the third note, the last note of the ricochet. And attention to your movement up bow. It has to go very well with your fingers. It's not just old hand. It, it's the movement of your wrist and fingers. You have to play the third note, but also the fourth. So that was sort of really playing by small, small sections 